Hello, welcome to Arkan Wasab, vlog number four on the restoration of the Doctor Who pinball machine. Okay, we pick up exactly where we left up yesterday. So it means that the back box is done painting. It still needs a little bit of drying. I won't be applying the stickers yet. I will wait maybe a, a, a day or two. I preserved the old stickers by using a simple um, masking tape on it. And the inside was painted as a overkill way of me being overkill. I have some stickers that I need to be applied that also are a bit too much because actually when I removed the middle back plate, the, it revealed two stickers, Langsmith and Accepted, and they are supposed to go here and there. So I will put them back before putting the metal back plate. Also, I, I did um, a few things uh, in between, I must admit, between the last time when I filmed and uh, today. I cleaned every ribbon cable, I cleaned the DMD PCB which was quite dirty. I also started uh, cleaning the canopy with Novus 2. I did the exterior, the interior is left to be done. I was expecting to work on this vlog on the motorized version of the Dalek but I'll see how it goes for today if it's uh, not too long because um, in my ultrasound ultrasonic cleaner I uh, clean every metal parts so right now I'm gonna mostly be focusing on rebuilding the interior of the head so first of all I'm gonna put back all the ground braid that was cleaned also so I'm gonna put the ground braid the back plate the PCBs all the gears and when it's done I will be looking to make the motorized static I'm mostly done reassembling the head. I will have to put on uh, the only things left or will be the kind of carriage bolt that goes here for the bracket. I can put them on as long as I haven't put the side decals. And uh, by the way, talking about the head side decals, here's a glimpse of them. The print quality is just plain amazing. I'm very excited to put them pretty soon. So uh, the assembly went pretty well. It's a now what I will be working on is the wobble head. And I have a um, pretty extensive instruction. I could almost say a book. That's not something that, that has any gameplay. It's just a visual effect. So I uh, totally understand why they decided to only go with the single light instead of a motor. I guess this was built around, uh, well, this was from 2002. So this dates about 15 years ago. Can you believe it? It looks pretty brand new, except for two things. The middle bracket here start having some oxidation, as well as the little bracket custom made that activate the opto here. So can you see how tight the fit is? So, I was kind of wanting to clean that out and make it shine and maybe put some WD-40 on it to actually keep it from oxid oxidizing again. Uh, I'm gonna have to move the little light bracket 
that is actually apply, applying some pressure on the on the shaft. Um, I'm a bit nervous about that because the fit seems so tight and this will be spinning. So uh, I will not tamper with that at all. This has been adjusted in factory by the guy who actually made the, the mod and it's set up in zero position right now in the opto. So I, I will not be trying to move that at all because this is kind of the center part that will be facing the player when you're gonna play. And also there's a lot of disclaimer in the manual saying that uh, the, the coding is not perfect. So it, it's, it mentions that the, 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 the head uh, may have problem returning to its center position. So there's a lot of uh, head doesn't return to exact center. There's a lot of things saying that this can and will happen. And they suggest putting some resistor to um, address this issue. So, uh, well, okay. <clears throat> there's a lot to know about this. I will take the time needed to it. I will see if I go through it with you at the same time so everybody that has that, that have this the same mod and a bit anxious about the installation well we'll go through it step by step let's do Before this together. Before doing the assembly the first thing I'm doing right now is using my fiberglass pen to remove as much corrosion as possible it's a very surface corrosion not too deep I'll remove the most of it then clean this up and put some WD-40 on it in order to seal this. And here's the installation. First of all, they're saying that this Dalek head um, was actually built to be uh, motorized. And they glued the head on the body when they decided to not motorize it. So all they're saying, it's been glued and you just have to pull it off. Uh, grabs the grasp the head and, and separate by pulling the two parts apart as shown below the glue gives up pretty easily Do not use the Daleks high stick to pry it put your fingers between the two parts as shown and pry it that way Okay, so let's see what gives Yeah I can hear the glue popping up. So yeah, that was it So I will remove the exceeding glue uh, at another moment so here's the head Man, that's a cool gas mask reminds me also a little bit for of uh, Yars Revenge from Hattery um, we will now adapt the head to be mounted on the assembly drill drill a 332 hole through the top of the head where the indent is so that's just here The centering of the eyepiece and head is accomplished by mounting a strip of machine machine steel machine steel to the underside of the head. Position the strip as shown with the edge of the steel half an inch from the head edge of the head. So as you see, this will be centered with that and will fit along that. Mounting the head on the shaft is accomplished by putting the hole in the centering strip and there is also this part just here that they do not mention in the instruction how to because there is some kind of you see the little prongs coming out so I don't know how this is supposed to fit and get hold into position maybe it doesn't because it you actually only have to tighten it with allen screw and it's not the same size as this one i don't think the hole is the 332 hole is big enough to actually fit the allen screw no it's not so i'm gonna go to a 1 8 size and it's also the perfect diameter of the indent that was already there 
Yeah. Okay, one eight, not three thirty two. I'm almost done. Well, I wish, but it's a start. One thing the head on the shaft is accomplished by putting the hole in the centering strip over the shaft and screwing the head down to the shaft from the top with the enclosed 632 Allen head cap screw. So that's what I just did. Adjusting, and that's the fun part, I love that. Adjusting wobble head is the most difficult portion of this install. I'll make no bones about it, you will hate this part. As much as I know you want to try out wobble head, you will need to spend some considerable time getting this right. First off, no two bodies are molded the same on the inside. Using the set screws on the inside of the mechanism, you'll need to adjust the left and right position and the top to bottom position. They're talking about those screws right here. You may notice that a set of screws are not even from left to right and front to back. This is okay because our goal is to get the head shaft as close to center as possible. You also want the gap between the head and base to be as small as possible. So, what we want here is to have the shaft align as perfectly as possible with the body that will be installed. So, this allows to actually move the head up and down and left to right. Why did they ask me to put the head already? Put the body on the mechanism. Why you put, told me to put the head? The nuts on the mounting, I need to unscrew that. I'll do some cleaning. I, I'm gonna pause this and remove all the excess of glue all around the body and the head to prevent any, you know, scratching. Okay, so I'm done cleaning the uh, leftover of glue on both sides and I just try to put in the body of the Dalek on the assembly and I have about maybe uh, 3 8 of an inch to move the assembly a little bit to the right. Let's say the right if we're facing it, the right. And I hope I'm gonna have and then I managed to find a way to actually pull it and remove it pretty easily. I gotta do some kind of twisting like that in order to be able to insert it. Uh, I had the little piece of tie wrap here getting in the way earlier. There isn't that much of, uh, of sliding allowed here. There's not uh, as much as I wish there would. Well, maybe. Maybe it's gonna be okay because you know in the instruction something they mentioned that is quite important <laughs> While doing this you may become convinced that there is no possible way that you're going to get it to line up hmm. But you'll need to remove the head loosen the screw readjust and try again Hold the assembly so that you can see how it will look when mounted You'll want to adjust the kit so it look good from that angle We've adjusted wobble head to a good neutral position to start, so try that one first. By the time I was done adjusting it, my clearance were less around a millimeter and the head was pretty much center. Maybe, well. Removing the body shows that the mechanism looked a little crook and not well aligned. But you have to remember that the heads were made 10 years ago. And this was written 15 years ago because this is 25 years old so if I can adjust that just for the fun of it you have to remember that the words were met were made 25 years ago and the environment they were subject to were less than perfect they will probably be a reject in the moving head arena but look just fine in the station stationary so yeah, all Dalek molding has some differences. So this is why they allow to, to adjust it depending on the molding quality of your Dalek. Right now, you see, I'm only missing maybe one eighth in order to be able to fit them in 
in the screw I could try to make it fit in that one but the other one won't fit and I'm at my maximum distance spend as much time as it takes to get it right you'll be removing the head many times to try and align it when it's right you'll know it after you get it right remove the head remove the body and get ready for the mounting portion of our program okay I really hope we'll be able to get to the mounting assembly portion I didn't tie down the bolt this time just to see if I can adjust it and it seems to be able to fit now but I, I need to adjust the height. Right now, what I'm really wondering is, you know, they told me to, uh, I feel like I followed the instruction correctly, but they told me to put this earlier, remember? But when you put this, it actually bump into this ring here, and they don't make any mention of removing it. But I feel like I will have to do so, because it, this hits the rim. And it actually makes the head a lot higher than supposed to. You see the gap? And in the instruction, they kind of mentioned that there should be absolutely no gap at all. No gap at all between the head and the body. So I feel like I'm going to have to... Re and there's also the screw head here that has some thickness. And I cannot remove this all the way down because the head... Or the, otherwise the head of the screw will start hitting so or unless I make some kind of trimming <laughs> inside here should I be trimming all of this in order to make sure that everything's all right and fits okay I'm gonna keep on re reading just to make sure that I haven't skipped any step but that's what I, I will do also, I managed to find a reason for this piece that is not explained in the instruction, okay? This piece will actually go in first and is some kind of stopper because there is some kind of Allen screw here and when I find the right height to put the head, I will lock this ring down. So when I'm going to be putting the head, it's going to kind of fit and clip on the little... Uh, on the little pins that uh, are extruding out so this will actually fit inside this so this will make sure the head rotates every time that I, that it will perfectly rotate the, the head as soon as the shaft is spinning because you cannot only rely on the Allen screw that will be on the top it will not uh, put enough pressure on the head to make sure it spins it spins right and it's not doesn't seem to be explained inside of this, but I can see it here. It, yeah, it's right there. But you don't talk about it. Maybe because it's version 1.0. I'll try to find more info on the internet. Because since this document is from 2002, I bet there must have been... Other people after that that have installed the Dalek motor and I have some hands. I just made a lot of research on internet. I watch uh, a lot of Doctor Who video about uh, modification and stuff and Dalek said I saw people doing incredible thing with Daleks like putting a lot of LEDs around and it was spinning and flashing and impressive stuff. Um, I also learned a lot about this thing that was actually developed in around 2000 from 2001 to 2002 and they made about a hundred of those kits and they stopped making it around 2012 because another kit came out which is called the ultimate wobble head and it's actually only a little servo that is uh, attached at the top of the the body and it spins the head it's very easy and simple to install but I, I think the effect is just not, not as good as this one will be. So, my this kit is pretty complicated to put uh, to assemble, but I think it has the more, most interesting effect.
uh, sadly, there is only a version 1.0 of the installation the, of, the, of this kit. There is no addenda or update. A lot of people are asking questions in the forum and none of them has come out with the problem I have about this little plastic rim here. It's not mentioned in the document and I just cannot accept that it needs to be kept that way. I mean, look at the gap it's creating. It doesn't make sense. And it's also definitely not talking about this little nut. In this document there's no update version and it had to be put on so um, this ring will actually be put on about this height when I will be done so this will actually be some kind of stopper for the head and keep it just a millimeter above this so I'm gonna take some um, initiative here and I will remove this rim because I want the head to be as close as possible I don't want it to be that high I want the effect to be as close as possible to the original and I will try to find a screw that has a flat head not a dome one because I want this to be as flat as possible too uh, so yeah those are homemade kit I'm done and it's a lot better now especially that I machine a little bit the hole of the bracket and I found flathead screw so that way we're gonna have minimal loss of height it's looking pretty good but there's also another issue that I will need to address Okay, let's see if I can remove this real fast. Okay, you see the little middle bracket here? Uh, when it's spinning, it's actually hitting the light fixture. This. Okay, since it's located on the side, I really wonder how this could have been worked because this is this definitely not mention in the instruction because right now since it's it hitting it you see that the rotation is pretty much limit limited there is no way it can make a full rotation because I I think it's kind of rotating almost I don't have a total uh, uh, it, it will have been helpful to only know how much the head rotate from my, one side to another but I'm pretty sure from the video that I've seen that the head is kind of rotating almost at 45 degrees and this is not possible with the light fixture here so we'll try to find a way to make it so that it doesn't hit it anymore hmm. you see that little extruding metal round part here it's actually hitting on the metal plate and it's preventing the assembly to actually sit flush on the metal plate. So what I actually need right now is actually drop it as low as possible to have the head as flush as possible with that. So what I'm gonna do... Ah, mods, mods, mods. I will be removing this piece of metal part that will allow the assembly to sit flush on it. So, in order to be able to remove enough material from the plate, I'm going to use my trusty Blade Runner from Rockwell. It helps me a lot if I have to actually remove some part that are inside the hole, otherwise I will use a bandsaw, but for this kind of job, this is the perfect tool for it. So, let's do this. Excellent. I got now a perfectly flush assembly with the metal plate. That's what I wanted. It's time for reassembly. I think the assembly is ready for me to put the body. It's perfectly flush and I also moved the socket from the light that was 
previously here I move it a little bit backward so I expect the middle bracket to have a lot more leeway problem is mostly the the frame of the motor here is hitting on the inside as mentioned in the document the molding was not perfect from one dialect to another so there's some kind of warping this is a 25 years old piece of plastic here we are we have what I guess is the smallest possible gap um, I don't think it's possible to make it smaller so it's about three millimeters because I could try removing you know I'll try something out that will give me a little bit more because you see there's some kind of a dimple here so I removed the little dimple pimple boot and I think it looks pretty amazing right now look at that almost no gap at all it's only created by the screw and the middle bracket I wish I could enclose it a little bit more but I think I won't go as far as that so right now what I'm left to do is actually put the little ring here and lock it into place things are getting better all the time um, I had to remove this piece again because it was interfering too much with the, the rim of the body I realized that the shaft is not perfectly perpendicular with the assembly there's a little slant thing on the left there's nothing I can do about there's no such adjustment that will help me um, make it straighter so that's something that does not have that much effect on the visual on the spinning on the head but you know it, it cannot be perfect I just wanna all I want to say um, I already start putting the cable on it and I'm also putting the flasher light because you don't want to fix all of this down and forgot to put in them also I made two little notch at the bottom so right now putting putting the base the body in place is just such more, much so much more easier so it just whoop, it's perfect fit it's what it should have been from the start actually and also make a little notch here so the light bracket fixture is not interfering with it so uh, I'm finally gonna be able actually what I need to do is something more like that okay so right now if I take a look at it I, uh, the head can make almost a 90 degree so I'm pretty sure the head is not tr will not is not trying to move any further the little stopper is finally put in place at the right height and I can slide it in there and it fits perfectly and it's pretty well lined up I'm very satisfied with how things turn out it's a lot of step it's a lot of adjustment but it's worth it I really wish the instruction were more detailed about this because it, there's a lot of step that was not mentioned okay I cannot secure the base and the head yet until I have placed the metal plate on the back box right now everything is perfectly aligned and lined up so we did it let's put that on the back box that's a pretty good challenge we got have here um, almost coming to a conclusion so I put the metal plate perfectly parallel with everything put the connection put the tie wrap put the little light fixture and it was mentioning in the instruction that you may have uh, not enough room to put the body so let's check it out if we put the body indeed we don't have enough room with the light fixture anymore so um, previously the body was just a little bit uh, more at the bottom and since we use the hole that is already in the head that is supposed to 
have the, the motor slide inside, there's no way we can move this any further at the back. We have to use the, the existing hole. So what I realized though is that if I put the canopy, I have enough room because I, I'm going to put the canopy exactly fitting in the existing hole. There is a little room for this to be moved to the front. So I'm going to unscrew that, create new holes. Uh, there is no way I can do it in, in, in another way. So I'm going to unscrew that and move it just a little bit forward. Right now I'm putting back the canopy, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove it once again because I know that uh, we're going to put new LEDs, a new LED kit on, on this machine. OCD LED. That will be a different story. So right now I need to go back to the instru instruction once again and make the connection. There's a connection at J107. 122, 118, 2, 208 and 206. So, so that made quite a lot of connection for just a rotating head. So that's it for vlog number four. The head is done. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe if you like it. What's going on? Stay tuned for the next episode. Ciao.